William Hopefully your favorite videographer from Two Hats Publishing. I welcome you to another Two Hats special of community events. Let's look in and see what's really happening. Oh, get the word out, because we can't wait around for the mainstream media to get, to get it, because they're not going to get it, because they're not down here with us. So if we can support each other here, push up sales, get the word out, let's, let's get this pop culture up higher and elevated than where it is right now. So, uh, here we go, the Chicano movement, where we are with the Chicanas, Latinx, you know, you know, it's, that's also controversial, that's a whole other topic, you know, it, I'll be honest with you, coming up with Latino Comic Con, Texas Latino Comic Con, it, uh, I was going back and forth between Latinx, uh, Latino, but then I, I went back to my educator and my, and my teacher, so I'm like, well, what's grammatically correct for my students right now, so I went with Latino, but, Especially with the ongoing push for representation, diversity, and especially our Chicanas, you know, we have, like you said, you know, it, this is a male-dominated industry, but you know, the uh, the Chicana experience is the other half. It's the missing half that you know goes unheard of. You know, and I have. I mean, we we all had strong. Uh, matriarchs and within our family and some of us who are just a matriarch you know just but where we're, what can we do to instill those, those stories well where are we at right now sometimes i feel like i know sometimes i feel like i don't um but so i look at mainstream comics and i see characters like america who's now being created i think that's by marvel and she's supposed to be this representation of brown America. She's a woman and she's queer too. And then there's also uh, La Borinquena that just came out too recently. She's Puerto Rican and her, her mission is to defend the island of Puerto Rico. So like that's legit uh, that those characters are Which making it into the mainstream. But then, you know, I have little things that happen. In Chicago recently, just a quick story, I had a Telemundo reporter hit me up I'm wanting to do a story about comic artists in Chicago, um, asked me to bring a couple friends. I brought a friend who's male, Mexican-American, and then I brought a friend who's Afro-Latina, Puerto Rican. She's, she's black. She identifies as black and Latina. Her comics mostly have to do with the island of Puerto Rico and mental health issues, um, as well as environmental issues. It's very sort of like fantasy world-esque. Um, anyway, so we were doing these interviews and the reporter who was a very light-skinned, almost white-passing Latina, it's like, well, to my friend, my Afro-Latina friends, like, well, so do your comics talk about Latino issues? <laughs> we were both kind of like, what? <laughs> like, one, she already said Puerto Rico, at least twice. Two, she also said Afro-Latina, at least twice. Three, she said mental health. You know, like, I, I understand where she was coming from where it's like okay but is mental health like a latino issue and i'm like girl like do you know how depressed i've been as i make some of these comics <laughs> um and it just it sort of like threw us for a loop but it also brought us back to like reality of where even our own latino community is at where not even we can agree on what latino is what latinx is um and what our issues are. I feel like a lot of times we point towards immigration. Totally fine, right? Like that's a huge issue in the Latinx community. But all, you know, Puerto Ricans, they, they got citizenship. Cubans who land on the mainland, they get citizenship. So it's, it's not up there for them, but they're still in the Latino community. Sometimes I feel like the Mexican American community's issues is the one that sort of plays a dominant role. And again, perfectly fine, there's a lot of us. Um, but we need to get to a place where we can recognize where those issues lie with the different communities that are in this larger Latinx community. We all have different issues, whether it's mental health, immigration, race, Black Lives Matter within the Latinx community as well, right? So we need to kind of decide how to bring everybody in to that big umbrella term and then figure out how to portray that in our art, figure out how to portray that in the stories that we tell. Thank you. Uh, so, I'll, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, <clears throat> Richard is known as the Godfather of Chicano like, comics, you know, Andy, you know, you're like, and so, let's, let's go back to you creating El Gato Negro, you know, in the early 90s, we're looking because that, that's, oh, 
you know, you're a mi minority within a minority in the industry. How is that like? How, what were the, some of the challenges? Because I remember seeing something you were at, at San Diego Comic Con early, right. early on. And so, can you talk a little bit about your experience there? Well, my experience on there, um, I mean, I've learned. I had no one to, to, look, to look at, look for. Uh, I did seek advice from, like I mentioned earlier, from Judge Margarito Garza. Uh, who is a criminal lawyer in Corpus Christi, and he he uh, told me of his uh, uh, ups and downs on when he was starting uh, his comic book on there, and then uh, but didn't want in in inside of him did not want to give it give it up, uh, but he was just too devoted to his family and also as, as you know being a criminal judge, trying and he loved his work. He was a very controversial ju uh, judge on there uh, when he sentenced those who do bad things. He would just basically call them pendejos, you know, um, in, in the courtroom, and he would get a lot of flack for that. But uh, uh, going back to what you were asking me, um, when I first started off with uh, putting out El Gato Negro back in 1993, uh, I came at the midst when the comic book industry was facing uh, turmoil. A lot of... Uh, a crash, right? Yes, it was a, like a crash where a lot of the retailers were kind of getting iffy on the indies, the independents. And uh, they were shutting the doors on them and focusing on the mainstream. Because uh, they were afraid, because uh, the retailers were closing down, you know, at that time. And for the independents, the small guys like us, they were going belly up before their first issue ever hit the stands. And uh, so I, what I did was I just kind of folded my arms, stepped back, and waited for the dust to settle on there. And, uh, and then just when, uh, you know, what really saved that industry was the Spider-Man uh, movie, with the very first one that was uh, Sam Raimi? Well, yeah, Sam Raimi. It, it saved the community. Although, uh, I did seek advice from uh, an old legend, Will Eisner, who created the spirit. Uh, I met him in San Diego at that time, and Carlos Saldana, uh, I mean, so Cal that. Yeah, yeah, Borito, introduced me to him, and I was a big fan of his right there, because he was one of my influence as far as uh, comic storytelling. He was a very master of it. Sometimes he would just do a series of panels with no dialogue and the artwork would tell the story. When I met him and, and uh, gave him my comic book, he noticed that I dedicated it to him, one of three, three uh, comic book creators in the industry, Bob Kane, Jack Kirby, and Will Eisner. He was very flattered and said, does somebody have a camera so I can take a picture with this young man? And Carlos gave him a camera and took a, I took a picture with Will Eisner. He gave me this advice about that he's seen this comic book industry die three times in his career. He said the comic book industry is just like Dracula. You know, they die and they come back to life. Where are we at right now with that? <laughs> it's making its way back up to the surface. <laughs> it's yeah, making it way. Are we included in that? <laughs> <laughs> we're there, we're there. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's talk about one of the things as, you know, in independent comic book creators, uh, organizers, artistic organizers, is uh, it's been a topic that's been approached to me, is are comics supposed to be political? Are we being political by being you know, by representing our diversity, by representing our own stories, our, our comics poli politics? It's a good uh, medium for that, for sure. Um, it doesn't have to be. It can be. It, it depends how you want to, you know, be about it. You want to be silly, you want to be goofy, you want to be thought-provoking, you want to push the envelope, you want to be edgy. Yeah, I mean, it's a great way of getting the, your, what you feel about society, how to, my favorite is satire. That's my favorite form of, of, of you know, style of preaching, 
preaching, I guess you can say, like Robocop is one of the greatest satire oh, movies yeah. ever. And a lot of people don't even think about it as that way because they did it in such a genius way that it just seemed like pure entertainment and silliness. But if you actually go back and don't realize it and watch that movie, you can see a lot of what these creators had to say about society at the time. This is the early 80s. So, I mean, cocaine is a hell of a drug, and it fueled the entertainment industry at that time. That's my favorite period of entertainment myself. So, yeah, sure. Let's get political with this shit if you want to. Let's rock and roll. All right, Vico, so I understand, you know, we actually, I, I was fortunate that I met Vico at the SoCon, and we actually had an experience. There were some issues with our tables, the SoCon tables being part of CXC, and we were set aside, we, you know, that well, was, People of color over there. Yes. <laughs> that was interesting. Hong Kong Columbus, right? And, uh, were, were our work, was our work too political? Or what, what do you think? I don't think it was. Um, I don't think comics have to be political. I saw this really funny meme on my Facebook of a little kid who wrote a sequel of stories. And it was like, the fart that killed everybody part one. And I was like, the fart that killed everybody part two. <laughs> like, I love that stuff. That stuff is hilarious. Um, so, I, like, when I do my workshops and lessons, I let the youth do whatever they want for the most part. I always insert, you know, my biases here and there. But um, I don't think it has to be political. But whether it's a blessing or a curse, if you're going to be an artist of color, you sort of by default are political. That's just the way that you're viewed because the world that you're in doesn't really always look like you, right? So the ver your very existence is almost political, even if you are writing about farts that killed everybody. You're the Latino artist that wrote about farts that killed everybody. Um, so, and we, I mean, we see this no matter where we're at, whether we're comic artists or just working in an office somewhere downtown, like you being the brown person in the building, it's like, you must know about immigration. You must know, you must tell us what it's like to be brown. And that's not what you're there for necessarily all the time, but that's how you're gonna be viewed. So it's almost like whether we like it or not, we are political, but it's up to us how we treat it how we respond to that. So Richard, is it the negro political? It, it depends on how you look at it. Uh, it, it, it can be uh, a little bit of everything. And, uh, it could be uh, a graphic journal. Um, it, like uh, what you mentioned, the part that, that killed everybody, you know, he didn't add on the, the part that killed me, you know, at the very end. <laughs> but, uh, uh, it, it could be a satire, it could be anything you, you want it to be, only that you have that control. And what you have that control is basically what counts the most is the story. Because it's the true backbone. I mean, you can do, you can do incredible art and the story can be shitty. And then uh, you can do cruddy art and the story is phenomenal. You know, either way. It, but it's the true backbone. Uh, Walt Disney once said that, you know, you're the storyteller first, and then you're the artist. Oh, Excellent. So, you know, to, you know, talk about the trolls and all that online, but, <laughs> uh, <we'll see. laughs> This is William, hopefully your favorite videographer from Two Hats Publishing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please leave comments below or like, follow, or subscribe to us and get notices of all our videos. We love it even when you call.